Oi. Welcome to Trade Ideas. I'm Jake Merle, sitting down with Howard Penny, Sector Head of Restaurants at Hedgeye. Howard, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. So let's get right into it. What stock are we looking at today? My favorite short idea in the space, Domino's. So Domino's has actually had quite the run over the past 10 years. You know, they've absolutely crushed it with their delivery service. However, over the past year or so, they seem to be running into some issues with growth and also competition. Yeah. So can you please walk through the bear case for Domino's and why you think they're running into some trouble? Sure. So it actually started overseas where um, digital ordering is two to three years ahead of where we are in the United States. So the competition from Just Eats and some of the, you know, the Grubhub equivalents in, in Europe is eating into Domino's competition over there and making it more difficult for them. Them. So that is now making its way to the United States with the Grubhub and Postmates and DoorDash and, and Uber Eats are taking a lot of incremental market share from the delivery market or you know the delivery pizza market or however you want to look at it that way. So in terms of competition with these companies like Grubhub and Postmates, are those business models even profitable? Like how much of a threat are they actually to Domino's overall business? Well, the, the, interesting you ask that question because the Domino's CEO is basically saying it's not sustainable, right? That these business models aren't sustainable. And there's an aspect of it that's probably true in the sense that the money that's flooding into these companies today are allowing them to provide free delivery and you know excessive discounting if you will in the sense of free delivery and free offers and and whatnot so but it's in terms of the shift the secular shift of people eating at home people want a restaurant quality meal but they want it at home and that's not going to stop like that is going to be there now the question of whether these companies are profitable or not is a separate issue now grubhub is definitely profitable, $220 million in EBITDA, something like that. So I guess the best way to think about it is there's this mutual share destruction that is now pervasive in this business model of delivery. So even though delivery is strong in general and people are demanding delivery, uh, Domino's is losing market share as these new competitors come online. So if you think about it, ten, so Domino's has a great run for 10 years, as you said. They're literally the only thing you could get delivered to your house was pizza. Right now, you can give the babysitter on a Saturday night, you know, forty bucks, and they could get you know a sandwich. They can get pizza. They can get Chinese food. You can get hamburgers. You can get anything delivered today. So, Domino's had the business model that was dominant market share and delivery, and now they're just losing share. Now that's going to lead to another problem, and the other problem is that they're growing units too fast. So as same store sales slow, and this is just the beginning, right? This is why we're talking about it today, because I think the issues that are present itself from a sales standpoint are going to manifest itself into unit profitability for the franchisees. And the company is calling it fortressing. So as they open up, and that's a fancy term for cannibalization, right? And they're doing it all over the world. And as they sell slow and they accelerate their units, the franchisees are getting angry or going to get angry. And that's what you're seeing overseas. It's easy for the franchisees to be happy when same store sales are seven, eight, nine percent, right? When same store sales are flat to one to two and inflation, labor inflation or food inflation is five to six percent, then their margins start declining. And then when their margins are declining because the sales aren't there and then you layer on more stores because you've got, you know, the company wants to open up more stores because they feel like they have white space available to them. That complicates the franchisees profit experience margins. And so what happens when the franchisees become unhappy? What happens to Domino's overall business? Well, that speaks to their ability to open up stores, right? And so what we care about and what we look at at Hezai is rate of change, right? We, the rate of change is slowing for same store sales, and that's going to manifest itself into a slowing of the unit growth. So that's why the stock's going to ultimately go lower from here and because they have to slow unit growth over time. Now, that's not in it today, and people aren't talking about that today, but that's where this will go ultimately. And how much lower do you see share prices going? Because you know they just reported earnings last month, the, the stock fell off the cliff. So what are you expecting from here? So we look at 180 as sort of, it's 225, I think, something like that today. I look at 180 and then if it gets there, we'll reassess it and that sort of, because it could go to 150, but we'll see what the dynamics are and what the trends look like when it gets there. But. Um, but it could go lower than that. But right now, I'm just thinking 180 is kind of where it's headed. For that $180 price target you have, how did you come up with that target? How do you value Domino's? So I'm looking at Domino's. So one of the things that has um, occurred in the last couple of years is all of these asset light business models, McDonald's, Yum, Domino's, 
are trading at egregiously high multiples. You know, I think Domino's is 18 or 19 times cash flow, EV dividend, on the next 12 months basis, and almost 30 times earnings. Six or seven years ago, that was probably 12 times and 15 times or 20 times. So I think the number, you can get somewhere around $9.50 in earnings times a 20 multiple, kind of, you know, round numbers will get you to 180. Um, and that's what I'm looking at. I think the street is 950 in earnings. I'm a little lower than that. So a more normalized multiple on that would get you to a buck 80. Now, again, that nine dollars or 950 in earnings could be lower. If I'm right about the unit growth slowing and the comp slowing, then that nine dollars might not be the right number, and it might be eight. So it could be 160 if you use that same multiple. So I'm, that's roughly how I get there. And what would you say is the biggest risk to your thesis? That the same sort of sales reaccelerate. Um, I don't know. One of the things they did yesterday was announce a 50% discount. So basically, if you buy a pizza online for the next week, you can buy it at a half off. Right. right. <laughs> so that's a good deal. That could accelerate same store sales. Um, I, I think this, my, this thesis that I have has been around, for, I've had it for a year, a little over a year now, and it's really just now manifesting itself, but it will have iterations based on what the company does. But if I'm wrong about the competition, as you alluded to earlier, that maybe the business thoughts aren't sustainable, that's another piece of it that might go against me. But for the time being, um, the people that have funded DoorDash to be a $14 billion company as a private unicorn, they're not going to go away, right? They want that company to ultimately come public so they can make money. So, Speaking of DoorDash and these other third-party uh, delivery services, would you be looking to do a pairs trade, you know, short dominoes and long one of these disruptive companies? Well, the only one you can play effectively today is Grubhub, and we are long Grubhub. I think that um, that it is it is real. Again, this shift, the, the restaurant industry is a 700 billion, the food Away, the food away from home is a $700 billion market. I think delivery is, you know, call it 25, 30 billion today, gonna go to 200 billion. And so you've got this massive shift in how consumers are gonna consume food. And Grubhub will be one of the best stocks positioned to do that. And how much upside are you expecting for Grubhub? Uh, I could double easily. It's a, well, so look at it this way. Grubhub is a five, round number, $5 billion company, and it makes money. DoorDash last funding round was 14 billion, right? And Grubhub has more market share than DoorDash. So it's, you know, why couldn't, why shouldn't Grubhub be a $10 billion company? So if we take a step back and look at the broader picture, how are these third party uh, service providers affecting the entire restaurant industry? Um, it's going to be painful for a lot of what I'm calling purpose built restaurants, right? So if you were purposely built for, you coming in, taking your family into sitting down and eating a meal within the four walls, that business model is effectively broken today. And casual dining was always an occasion in between something. So um, if you were in between the sports field or you're in between school or you were in between shuffling the kids around, you would go to a, a meal and have a meal at a casual dining restaurant. So what's happening now is, and I, there was an article just the other day, um, the, uh, I don't, I forget the gentleman's name that founded uh, Uber, but he's now founded another company called Cloud Kitchen. And there's, and the Cloud Kitchens or Cloud Restaurants are effectively restaurants that are built, purpose built for delivery, meaning their margin structure is such that it can accept the fee, the delivery fees that uh, an Uber Eats or a Grubhub will put on the restaurants. Because a, a restaurant company runs on low margins anyway, so they're complaining about the fees that a Grubhub and an Uber Eats and a DoorDash are paying them. So it is, it's disruptive in a number of ways. One, people want to eat at home and they, they're not wanting to go out to eat. You're having to pay that fee. But two, now there's a whole new type of restaurant being built and that's called cloud kitchens, dark kitchens, however you want to look at it. So it's, cre it's creating, there's a big evolution or a big shift in the restaurant industry today. Well, Howard Penny, long the disruptors, short the disrupted. We'll see how it plays out in the months to come. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Howard is bearish on dominoes. Specifically, he likes shorting ticker symbol DPZ at current levels. He thinks share prices could reach as low as 180 over the next six months. In addition, Howard is bullish on Grubhub. He likes buying ticker symbol GRUB at current levels. He thinks the stock price could double over the next six months. That was Howard Penny of Hedgeye, and for Real Vision, I'm Jake Merle.